Adam Savage here from my cave. Today's One Day Build comes from the upcoming film, Mortal Engines. Now, what you might not know is that Tested, which means me and Joey right there behind the camera, uh, recently got back from New Zealand where we were doing coverage of Mortal Engines. Um, this, we are doing coverage because the film was made in New Zealand uh, by our friends at Weta and produced by Peter Jackson, directed by Christian Rivers. We talked to a whole bunch of the folks about the making of this film and we're really excited for you to see our coverage. But today's one day build is I get to build a prop from the movie. Um, now, when you're making a film like this, you're doing world building, right? That's a term of art. They're building a brand new world and they really did build a wholly new vision of a kind of a post-apocalyptic world and it's a really cool vision. But that also meant that the art department had to work overtime making every bit and bob and piece and part and parcel of that world fit together as a cohesive whole. And I really got to get into the weeds with them about how difficult that can be. Luckily enough, production made available to me some of the 3D files for one of the hero props. And while I was flying back from New Zealand, Sean Charlesworth here in San Francisco was furiously printing out those parts. And they are here now. And they are today's one day build. This is a character in the film named Anna Fang's hero sidearm. It is a four barreled uh, uh, sidearm with a tremendous scroll work uh, that feels like it's referencing both uh, Japanese sword making and also Damascus steel. Um, it looks almost like a piece of jewelry as much as it looks like a weapon. And as you can see, most of it's 3D printed here. Uh, so this one they build is a lot of mechanical work, just getting this thing up and running, and then it's going to be a lot of painting and finishing work, and that's going to be the most fun part because this sidearm does not have a standard uh, uh, weapon finish. Uh, it's much more ornate than that, and I'm gonna have a lot of fun doing it. All right, time to get started. But these are all spaced evenly right. uh, as far as top and bottom. So starting at the top, Right. I got the diameter in case you need it. Mm -hmm. Center the center. So uh, if you add, if my math is right, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you add 0.023 going that way when you go down and then over a little bit, that should be right for that position right there. Okay. Okay. So mechanically, uh, I've got to get this part connected to this part and make that pretty seamless. I've got to add in the trigger. Uh, and the other trigger half. Now I'm going to make the trigger out of polished aluminum and paint it with yellow lacquer to make it look gold. And I'm going to do the same treatment to the hammers, all four of which go in here. Uh, they're not gonna mechanically operate because um, I don't know the mechanics inside this thing. I may someday make that work. Uh, and then the other thing I'm gonna do is when I look down these barrels, they don't look very realistic to me. So I'm gonna add some of this k &S brass here uh, to make them work, uh, because I think that looks really, it looks much more badass. Oh, there we go. Just my dirty fingers are enough. Great, okay, cool. All right, good. I'm pleased with that. That's nice and solid. I think I will, yeah. I think I'm gonna add a screw right there and then I've got a really nice mechanical connection between everything. 
All right, well, uh, we're moving along. Lest you think that, oh, 3D printing, it makes all model making really easy. Let me point out to you that uh, Sean Charlesworth spent six plus hours uh, refining this model so it could be printed on his PLA printer. And then it was 95 hours of printing for all of these pieces. Yeah, uh, again, it's still a lot of work. <laughs> but that's looking great. I'm very pleased with that. You ever want to look at some really cool steampunk artifacts? Take a look at wheel lock, wheel lock pistols. Wheel lock pistols. The Victorian Albert Museum in London has an insane display of them. That is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Okay. One of the things about tapping is when you're tapping plastics, you don't often need uh, a cutting fluid because uh, you just don't. But with PLAs like this that have a low melting temperature, um, you definitely don't want to tap, get your tap hot where it starts to melt the plastic. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit of uh, machine oil on my tap just to make sure that the tapped holes here are really nice and clean. That's great. That feels like a nice, solid amount of purchase I got on that. I'm gonna go from the other side. I'm pleased with that. I'm gonna clean that up with some disc sanders. I gotta figure out what happens here because I really don't know. Beautiful! <laughs> okay, so now I need to slice these guys down. Uh, time for priming. I've got to prime this and this. 
Yeah. And then I've got to uh, make these out of aluminum and I'll probably stack them. Right, and then I've got to dress the inside of that, whatever that looks like. Um, this is one of those little tiny details that's worth taking care of. The, uh, the SLA print didn't print these round holes perfectly round. They're ever so slightly off, and it's not the kind of thing you notice from even a foot or two away, but up close, the lack of roundness really kind of ruins the, the feel of these. So I'm just opening them up another 20 thou to make them all uniform, and it will make a difference in the final product. It'll just make it feel that much more, more better. I'll let that dry and I'll make some of my aluminum parts. So I need four hammers for this gun, uh, and I'm going to make them out of aluminum. I have stacked them in order to cut them out all as one piece. Uh, and I have attached them with two 440 screws through the two holes that are in the originals. Now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to paint uh, this side of my aluminum in a blue lacquer called Dicum. Uh, this is what's called marking fluid and it will, you've seen me use it on tested before, this will allow me to scribe very precise cutting lines onto my aluminum that I have as guides for exactly the shape I want to cut out. As long as your scribe is sharp, you should be able to get a very, very tight reference line. The trick is not letting your part get jostled one bit. And I am very bad about that. My parts get jostled a lot because I move too fast. I'm impatient. There we go. Good. Okay. Look at me doing some precise filing. I got the courage to do this from um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Clickspring, Chris. I'm always amazed by how much material you can take away with just a single pass with a file. Thanks for giving me the, uh, the impetus to try this. All right, I have four hammers. I'm pretty pleased with the shape. I think I can get these to a pretty good polish. 
That's what I'm going to try and do next. All right, now I have to cut out the four pointed trigger and I'm gonna do that using my scroll saw. All right, that's the beginning of my trigger. Doing pretty good here. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. I'm very pleased with that. I could spend a few more minutes getting rid of some of those scratches, but you know what, honestly, I'm fine with them. These bad boys. Okay, so I wanna drill a hole. You know what these hammers remind me of? Lobster Johnson. They remind me of Lobster Johnson, yeah. First up, these, this gun is gonna get effectively a, a, a pearlescent paint job. Uh, first I need to do a little bit of assembly on it, uh, and then I am going to hit it with some chrome paint. Uh, and that will make it look pretty Actually, you know what? I can hit it with the chrome paint first. So I hit this and this with the chrome paint. And then as I add the triggers out of gold, it should be really, really beautiful. After the chrome paint, I'm going to give it a clear coat. And that'll allow me to do uh, layering in of some pearlescent washes on top of this to get that look that, uh, that they had in the film. I'm really kind of looking forward to this one. My chrome is Malto... Molotow Chrome, Liquid Chrome. It's the best thing I have ever found. It's pretty mind-blowing. Um, I'm mixing a bunch. Uh, it tends to, it thins well with lacquer thinner and per lacquer thinner. If you're looking at it here, look at this. This is the Molto coming right out of the package. I know that's cool, but that's also very, very thin. And in general with lacquers, I was taught that you kind of want to mix them almost one to one. Ideal lacquer consistency is about the consistency of milk. All right, let's give this a shot. Oh yeah, look at that, here we go. To be honest, that's almost a little garish to me. But that's okay. We're gonna take it down a little bit. <laughs> All right, one down.
Okay, so now I'm trying something I have never tried before, which is I want these parts that are polished uh, silver. They're polished aluminum, but they look like, you know, a silver color. I want them to look gold, so I'm going to hit them with a clear lacquer. I've got some guitar lacquer here, and I'm going to add some translucent pigment to it in the hopes that it'll get me a color that looks a little like gold. I honestly am not sure. I'm going to start with the trigger since it's one part rather than four. Let's see how we go. I mean, there's nothing to do but try, right? Okay, so there's my gold lacquer. All right. That's pretty good. Well, it's a, it's a very green yellow. And it's probably a reaction between the uh, slight cool color of the aluminum. But I actually, I pretty much dig that. That's great. Ah. <laughs> All right, you stay. Ooh. Don't you move? Okay, now we're gonna do the these guys here. I'm going to do assembly before I put the barrels in. I want it contiguous before I start giving it the washes of pearlescent blue, because if you paint these things separately and then put them together, you'll see the joints, you'll see the difference. Um, this isn't gonna be a perfectly uniform paint job. It's gonna try and feel like a piece of Victorian hardware. Yeah, all right, so uh, here we go. I must say, actually, just looking at the, the bright chrome, it's, it's actually too bright for me. I mean, look, good chrome is really hard to do as a paint treatment, so I'm ecstatic that one now exists. But it's actually, it's so shiny, it actually is like inhibiting me from being able to see details of this thing. Uh, and that's problematic, so I can't wait to start layering in the paint and start watching it come into its own. Okay. Excellent. I'm going to try a very light wash of pearlescent blue here. Let's see. It may end up, well, I mean, anything goes here, so let's see. Ooh, that's nice. Nice and subtle. Okay, great. All right, I've got a nice chrome undercoat, a clear blue pearlescent overcoat. I am now going to start adding the rub and buff. Yeah, you knew rub and buff was gonna be part of this. Uh, Joey, behind the camera there, and Norm, just off camera, were both complaining that when they use rub and buff, it gets everywhere. And if that happens to you, well, I'm gonna show you uh, how I'm gonna do this. Cause here's the thing. I don't want rub and buff everywhere on this. I actually want it only on the high spots. I want it to end up looking like a filigree. Uh, and thus I'm going to seek to apply rub and buff as a very thin layer on only these proud premonitory details across it. Now that's gonna be non-trivial, but I hope I can achieve it. Really, one of the keys is instead of a terry cloth, I'm going to be using a much closer weave uh, uh, surgical scrub cloth. And then the goal is get rub and buff on it just like that, but a nice thin layer, and then start to 
yeah, just like that. See that? I'm not getting it any, on any of the undersides. I'm only getting it on the high spots. Ah, now some details finally starting to be visible. Oh, great. All right. I want the brass to look a little less new, especially underneath all this, so I'm just going to discolor it here. I'm just going to heat it up until I get it to be a slightly more interesting set of colors. Rub and buff, time for some buffing. I'm going to want to hit this with a wash and it's probably an oil wash, but I think I might have to clear coat it first. So let's give it a, yeah, that's <laughs> come and shape it up nicely. Uh, but let's give it a clear coat before I give it that oil wash. I really like the small model paint clear coat because it dries really fast. That's an eighth inch hole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Ah. Uh. Oh my gosh, look at, look at how beautiful this thing is. As you'll see in the other videos, I got, I got to watch the first 25 minutes of Mortal Engines and it is a truly unique and beautiful vision of a whole new world. Uh, and this Anna Fang's hand cannon is emblematic of the amount of incredible detail that Christian Rivers, the director, Peter Jackson, his producer, and all the incredible folks at Weta and Weta Digital put into this world to make it feel like a cohesive whole. Um, I am honored to have been able to build a small piece of that world here in the cave. Ah, I'll see you guys next time.